In this lecture, I will cover some details of the jet stream, a river of air marked by higher than average winds that formed at the boundary between the tropo and stratosphere. At the conclusion of this video, you should be able to describe the jet stream, where it forms, and provide an example of how the jet stream impacts weather and how the jet stream is impacted by the movement of air masses. The jet stream is a river of air that forms between large air masses of different properties. The globe on the upper right shows the general locations of the Earth's jet streams. There are two polar jet streams and two subtropical jet streams. The exact location of the jet streams depends on the character of the air masses, the season, the interaction with other large atmospheric processes like El Nino, and the Coriolis effect. The globe on the lower right illustrates further the location of jet streams between air masses. The cross section to the left shows a detailed look at the jet stream locations. Note the location between the different atmospheric cells, the changes in the height of the troposphere as you move towards the poles, the tubular shape of the jet streams with high winds at the core, and the correlation between the jet streams and the areas of unstable rising air. This is another view of the jet stream outlined in blue color contours. This time a map view with the jet stream defined by wind speed vectors. Note that the jet stream is defined by the longer vectors, which means higher wind speed. As stated in slide two, jet stream location and wind speed is dependent on seasons. In North America during the winter, the jet stream is located further to the south with higher wind speeds. This means that colder polar continental air mass can penetrate further south resulting in our colder temperatures. This jet stream also steers storms towards California and the Pacific Northwest resulting in wet but mild winter winters. During the summer the jet stream moves to the north and wind speeds decrease. Storms are now directed more to the north and both California and the Pacific Northwest have typically dry summers. This slide shows a still image of a video of the jet stream. There is a link on the Blackboard site in the week 9 and 10 folder. You should go have a look. It really shows an interesting variation in the jet stream over time. In the next slide, I present an example of how changes in jet stream location can dramatically influence temperature. In the winter of 2014, the jet stream had a huge southward bend in North America, resulting in and also due to the movement of a large polar vortex or air mass across much of the central and eastern United States. This slide shows two images illustrating this weather phenomena. The image on the left shows the cold, low-pressure vortex with counterclockwise wind pattern descending into the middle of the U.S. In the west, a high pressure system is settled over the coast, which results in dry conditions for much of California, therefore worsening the drought conditions. The map on the right shows the same information, with the gradient showing the cold temperatures associated with this vortex. These two images contrast a normal polar vortex versus the polar vortex position during the cold spell in 2014. The reasons for the changing shape of the polar vortex are complicated and beyond this discussion. Note that during normal polar con vortex, the polar low and colder temperatures are confined to the polar areas. With the weakening of the polar low, the cold air spreads, bringing cold low pressure systems further to the south. The movement of this air mass is related to the dropping of the jet stream and the two likely influence each other. The cold air pushes the jet stream south and the movement of the jet stream provides room for the polar vortex to move. This slide is a satellite image during the polar vortex event. Note the location of a cold front that brings rain and clouds to the far southeast United States. In the central U.S., high clouds are associated with bitter cold, with many locations recording historic lows in wind chill temperatures. 
For example, Babbitt, Minnesota at minus 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicago, Illinois with a minus 82 degrees wind chill. And Georgia locations dipping below zero. Heavy snowfall also occurred, occurred along the leading edge of the polar vortex with significant accumulations as far south as Georgia. In summary, the jet stream controls and also responds to movement of air masses. Jet stream location can be used to help predict weather patterns. The jet stream also can impact air travel. Perhaps you have noticed that travel times from west to east or east to west can vary significantly. For a plane heading east with the jet stream, pilots can ride the high winds and significantly decrease flight time and fuel use. Of course, this can also result in a bumpy ride that is associated with turbulence in and around the jet stream. Heading west, pilots try to avoid the high winds of the jet stream as they slow travel and increase fuel use. This phenomena is illustrated in this slide. For west travel across the Pacific, planes take the Great Circle route, which is a shorter distance between two cities, although on this slide it looks longer. However, due to the jet stream, the return flight is usually quicker when following the jet stream. The jet stream is clearly a dynamic part of the atmospheric system. Changes in the jet stream influence weather, move weather systems across the globe, and therefore distributing energy, and jet stream location is also influenced by the movement of air masses. The next time you watch or listen to a weather forecast, keep your ears open for the news of the jet stream location. It will be a clue to future weather changes and patterns.